Uh, why end the campaign now? Well, because all the primaries are over and we're moving it along. Actually, the campaign hasn't ended, it's just starting. I mean, I think the whole idea of what we've been doing is just getting a strong boost uh, now. And, and the uh, FEC has some restrictions on what you can do and how you use your website and the reports and also actually we're being released from some constraints and we'll be able to help more of our candidates and organize better and uh, we're planning for you know our, our big conference up in St. Paul so that's what we're going to concentrate on now so the organization the grassroots organizations are just uh, blossoming you know it's all it's all been spontaneous but we're just going to encourage that so um, instead of anything ending it's really just the beginning. By saying this is beginning, do you mean that this is more than a campaign, it's more of a movement? <laughs> it has turned into that. I thought it was going to be a, a campaign for a few months, <laughs> and it was much, much bigger than I ever dreamed. It has turned into a, literally a movement. People coined the word revolution, and in a sense it's revolutionary, and we do want to change a lot. I mean, if you look at our platform, it's, it's uh, pretty drastic as far as shaking up the status quo, changing foreign policy, monetary policy. Actually, we believe in balance budgets, you know, a few things like that. So uh, it, it, it did. It uh, morphed into something I never dreamed of, the grassroots. I mean, we ended up with 22,000 precinct chairmen in the country. And we think that with the new organization, we'll double or triple that. So when you say new organization, what, what does your campaign now become as you move towards November and beyond? Well, it, it, uh, it, it's a new organization, and it's going to be called Campaign for Liberty. And I figure... Well, that's what I've been doing since the first, first time I ever ran for Congress in 1974. So the campaign continues, and it just has a slightly different format, but there's so much momentum and so much enthusiasm, and there's been so much attention and so much money involved in the last year. I mean, in, in, uh, in the last year, it's probably 10 times more than I did in 29 previous years. I mean, that's, that's how much it has changed. So does it become a political action committee? It... Uh, Political Action Committee, uh, I'm trying to think of which, which one, yeah, it's, it'll probably be in the category of, it'll, yes, it'll be doing political, it'll be permitted to do political action. Because it doesn't just back a candidate, it backs no, an idea. No, it, it backs an idea, and uh, we also, I've, I've always had a political pack, it's called Liberty Pack. Uh, it's not been very active, but it's going to be <laughs> be activated to literally be able to help people put money into it. But this is uh, a vehicle to uh, promote the campaign for liberty. That's what it is. So do you endorse John McCain, Bob Barr, or none of the above? At the moment, I haven't endorsed anybody, and I'm not on the verge of doing that. I'm, I'm endorsing the Constitution. I'm endorsing our campaign for liberty. That's where I'm putting all my effort. And you've probably already answered this question, but why did you stay in as long as you did? Mostly because of the determination of the supporters. They saw this as the vehicle. And some actually believed that uh, they would get a, a lot more delegates, but they also ran into a lot of problems, you know, at the state conventions, where the rules get changed or banned or ignored around the country. Sometimes they just close the doors. We have been excluded to a large degree and uh, they didn't realize that would happen I'm not surprised it happened but uh, but they were determined they thought instead of three or four dozen uh, uh, delegates would have hundreds and there's been some reports there was a report out today that said literally they weren't part of our camp it was a journalist reported and he said that we would have had hundreds and that uh, he was complimenting us on our determination. How surprised are you? I mean, you've, you've been down this road before, so how surprised are you that this time your message really stuck? Well, I'm very pleased. I'm surprised that we haven't looked, the country hasn't looked at it a long time ago, but I'm still surprised that finally it took hold. But I think there's been two things. The internet helped us spread the message, and also the need, the need for it. You know, the disastrous foreign policy we have, the monetary system in shambles, inflation back again, they run away deficits. This is much worse than the 1970s. And that was a terrible decade to pay for guns and butter of the 60s. Now we're paying for guns and butter, and we haven't even slowed up 
in the spending. And we're going through stagflation again, and people want something. Young people, when they hear this message, they respond very favorably because they know they're being dumped on. And they listen carefully to me, and uh, they're very much with, with this message. So I have had very, very good receptions on the university campuses. So tonight, when you get up and you speak in front of your supporters here and on the web, um, you're not signifying that this is the end of anything rather than the beginning? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I was, I was the reluctant candidate. I was willing to be pessimistic. I thought, we're not ready. We need another generation of education to get the young people involved. But I'll tell you, I imagine I'm probably about 100 times more excited and enthusiastic about what we're moving into now than I was a year ago when uh, things were very questionable, even in the early months. You know, I had to take a lot of hits and until the message got out there and uh, they knew what uh, our campaign was all about. So no, I, I, think, uh, I think something big is going on in the country and it's a lot bigger than me. There's a need and I've tapped into what, uh, what, the, what this country used to believe in. It's not, there are no new ideas, you know, like the Constitution is brand new, like the Bill of Rights is brand new, <laughs> you know, like minding our own business and protecting liberty, that is, it's not, it's not brand new, but respect for those ideas is what really is coming about. So does the money that you've raised then move into this new yeah. entity that will then go help other people with your ideas get elected? Yeah, we, we, we can move, move that money, but we'll raise more money because we're going to have a lot more people involved. But this hasn't, I mean, right now we're not talking about raising money. We're talking about momentum, keeping people enthusiastic, getting them to have something to do and uh, feel like they're part of something. So they have to had to have a a, a program, and and our big showing is going to be up in up in St. Paul, and uh, people are getting very excited about that. What are you going to do there? We're we're going to some people call it you know uh, an alternate uh, uh, convention, but it really isn't. It's a conference. It's a rally. It's to state our position. It's to energize people and have a lot of fun. It has nothing to do with confrontation or taking over or parading or obstructing like some other conventions. We're going to be, I think, six or seven miles away. We have no intention in, in, in trying to uh, demonstrate against the, the status quo of the Republican Party. But we're going to talk about that because we're, we're going to talk about our platform that we should have. And the platform isn't all that complicated. It, it boils down to the Constitution. And uh, everybody in Washington claims they, they obey it. But the people who have joined our campaign realize the difference between taking an oath of office and forgetting about it and doing what we're talking about. Last question. You've said you haven't decided who you would endorse. Have you decided who you won't be endorsing? Well, people have asked me whether I'll be endorsing John McCain, and you know, I, I usually say no, but soften that unless you know, his positions change. You know, what are the odds that he's going to change his position on the war? And that was that was probably the issue that prompted me to go in into the race. Is he going to want to talk about monetary policy and talk about the Federal Reserve? No, not likely. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to sound so so negative, but I can't support somebody uh, that doesn't agree with any of our issues, anything that we've talked about. I mean, we want to get rid of the income tax. We want to get rid of the Federal Reserve. We want to balance the budget. We want to really defend, uh, you, you know, the, the Bill of Rights. And we, we want our troops home. So, no, we're not going to find uh, anybody all of a sudden changing their minds and, and doing this. So, uh, no, uh, it, it uh, would be very difficult, but essentially impossible for me to support somebody that I essentially have no, no agreement with. Anything else you'd like to add? Not, not really, other than the fact that I'm pretty excited about what's happening. And I think, I think uh, really and truly, this is the beginning of something very big.